Now, as citizens, we trust police officers to work for our best interests, but the public, uh, but interests of the public by protecting our streets and enforcing our rules of law. But that's not always the case. Police officers have their guns, their tasers, batons, riot gears, and donks to protect them, but the tools civilians have might be much more powerful than all of those. Now, in the wake of a case where a photojournalist was arrested for taping police, the U.S. Justice Department reaffirmed its ruling that says he was uh, within his first, fourth, and 14th Amendment rights to film the incident. Photojournalist Manny Garcia was arrested in June of 2011 after filming police officers arresting two men in Montgomery County, Maryland. His memory chip was taken away and he was charged with disorderly conduct. Those charges were eventually dropped, and Mr. Garcia consequently sued the city for his arrest. But this case goes beyond one man's fight for reparation. So here to explain the bigger implications of this case and what it means for you and I, Mr. Garcia's lawyer, Robert Corn Revere, who is a partner with Davis Wright uh, Treeman LLP, and he joins me now. Thank you for having me. So can you uh, begin by breaking this case down for us? Uh, what's, the, what's the controversy with it? Well, the controversy is that you have a journalist filming police activity on a public street and gets arrested for it. And as you say, we do trust our police officers to protect us from, from danger, and in the vast majority of cases they do. But in certain instances, they either don't know or, or are confused about the state of the law, and this unfortunately is one of them, where they get upset that they're being filmed either by a journalist or by a private citizen, and then take action to stop that filming, either by simply stopping the incident from happening, happening, or by arresting that person, which is what happened in this case. And I understand that he was thirty—he was thirty feet away from the police officers, and then when they shined a spotlight on him, he, he moved back to a hundred feet. So it's not a question of whether or not he was interfering. And this was happening on a public street. Am I correct? Well, that's right. And and you know, this was an experienced photojournalist, someone who's operated in war zones and operates. He has been a credentialed White House photographer for twenty years, so he knows how to deal with uh, situations of authority and uh, not to get in the way and uh, that's exactly what happened in this case he stayed a respectful distance he didn't interfere with the police activity uh, when the spotlight was shined on him he moved even further away uh, and when he was initially challenged by the police he simply identified himself as a member of the press opened his hands to show that he had nothing threatening other than a camera and it, at that point he was arrested. Now one of the po important things to note about this case is that Mr. Garcia uh, was fighting it both as a journalist as well as a citizen. I, I want to read a quick um, uh, quote from, from your brief that um, you guys filed. It says, the First Amendment right to record police officers performing public duties extends to both the public and members of the media and the court should not make the distinction between the public's and the media's right to record here. That was actually from the Justice Department. So. He's well, not only fighting, and he's not only fighting here as a journalist, he's saying that as a citizen, he should have been allowed to do this, right? So um, should there be a distinction, really, when it comes to recording police officers between journalists and citizens? No, not at all. I mean, the First Amendment belongs to all of us. It protects private citizens, and it protects members of the press from government action that restricts their freedom to speak or to rec uh, gather information that allows them to talk about uh, possible public uh, misuse of power and that's exactly what was happening here and courts around the country increasingly are dealing with situations like this there was another case up in Boston involving a private citizen who filmed a police arrest was ultimately arrested himself for it on similar circumstances as here and the court went out of its way to say that private citizens are protected every bit as much as journalists and that the First Amendment protects these kinds of activities. And uh, speaking about the fact that there are so many of these cases popping up, we actually do have a clip uh, that highlights a few of them. If we could go ahead and play that. Get off the motorcycle. Get off the motorcycle, state police. And go. Know who you are, and I want to know why you're taking pictures of the subway system. Relax. I was going. Relax. Take care. Relax. Relax. Relax, please. You don't have to put your hands. You don't have to put your hands on me. Yeah, I'm just doing my job. I have DCPD press passes. 
So obviously those are each individual circumstances and there's a lot of parts of this. But the U.S. Justice Department, with your case in particular, um, reaffirmed that they, citizens have the right to film police officers. So why does this keep coming yes, up time right. and again? I think part of it is, uh, as in your last story, technology advancing faster than the law. You have now everyone carrying out their own personal recording device. People with smartphones can record either still pictures or video and audio. And as a result, you have images like the ones we just saw showing up on YouTube. Now, I have to be fair, I have to say, I've also seen images of police behaving very respectfully mm -hmm. and following uh, what I believe are the appropriate constitutional guidelines. But unfortunately, you also see examples of where police are obviously upset that someone has the temerity to record the incident of public officials performing their duties in a public space. And as a result, they take some kind of action against that recording. Well, and at the end of the day, these cameras can work to prove a police officer's innocence as much as they can work to prove uh, possibly uh, excessive force. But we only have about a minute left, but I have to ask you, what tips would you give to somebody um, to when they want to go and film a police officer to make sure that they're not crossing any boundaries? Well, I think as Mr. Garcia was uh, acting in this case, to make sure that you, if you're a member of the press, identify yourself as a member of the press, do not interfere with police activity, because if, if you do, uh, they're within their rights to prevent you from doing that. But if you're staying at a respectful distance, if you are exercising your rights, and I, I think as courts and the Justice Department increasingly make clear, those boundaries will be protected as we move forward. And hopefully, if our case is successful, that'll make that more possible in the future. All right, Robert Corn Revere, a partner with Davis Wright uh, Truman um, LLP, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.